What's going on, guys? The Inhuman Beat Town. I'm back with more Fate Grand Order. You know what time it is. Oh, boy. Now, I've heard several things about Babylon, but the one thing that terrifies me the most, the one thing, the only thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that terrifies me the most about this is that it's... There's a lot of dialogue. <laughs> uh, it's gonna rape my vocal virginity. Don't ask what that is. Don't Google that. It's probably actually a thing. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. It's time for Absolute Demonic Front. Babylonia, which I will continue to refer to as Babylon because it's easier. All right. <clears throat> Morning, Mash. I have something personal to discuss with you today. This morning. Oh. <clears throat> this morning, the doctor came to me like any other day. His voice, his breath, his mannerisms. He was the same calm, peaceful man he always was. As your primary physician, I need to have a serious discussion with you. I'm going to grit my teeth and tell you the truth here. Mascariolite, your lifespan is nearing its limit. Just like humanity has no future past 2019, you have no future beyond that time. Yeah, about that. It's one of those times where peeking into the future already ruined it. That was decided at the beginning. You can't stop it. I can't stop it. No one can stop it. I don't know, giant deus ex machina could probably stop it, but where would we get one of those? Even the grail, the supposedly omnipotent wish granter, cannot change this fate. I have several questions. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna call large amounts of bullshit. I'm pretty sure something that is supposedly omnipotent and all-powerful that could grant wishes uh, could extend her life. Um, I don't believe science can overrule magic. Um, just call it a hunch. <laughs> That's literally like the weirdest thing. It's like, oh yeah, we have this device that grants wishes, supposedly. You know, a little on the down low, it doesn't exactly work as it should. But it can't fix you. Gonna call bullshit. After all, the Grail is merely a shadow that fell just one step lower from a higher dimensional phase. A great crystallized magical resource. Calling it an omnipotent wish grantor is like saying you can buy anything with money. I mean... You kinda can. Almost. Almost. For like, was it Total Recall that had the pills that... For emotions? I don't remember which movie that was. Anyways. The truth is, the Grail can only execute what a human it envisions. It is not omnipotent. Don't be mistaken about that. I silently agreed. The Grail is only a means of accelerating things. Huh. Did you smell that? Mmm. Smells like- Ow! Ah, I bit my tongue! Oh god! Oh. Ow! <laughs> Alright, I won't talk shit anymore. God, I'm sorry, body! You better be. Anyways. Raising buildings, building cities, making. What's an epoch? Eh. For everything humans have done, the Grail uses its vast stores of magical energy to make the process quicker. Why was the doctor telling me something that I already knew? Mash, it's called exposition. I'm explaining to the audience. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Don't worry about it. You're going to die soon. It has nothing to do with your own will. It's simply how you were created. Do you find that frustrating or sad? Does it make you feel empty? Well, I... 
It's terrible. I'm not talking about Kialdus' research. I'm talking about all of humanity, and all of life. Living things are destined to die from the moment they're born, and yet they possess the cap capacity to grow. If something's going to die, why bother growing? Both the physical body and the spirit should maintain the same state from birth till death. If they did, there would be no sadness or pain. Everything would be equal. Everything would have meaning from the beginning. But this planet's life is nothing but waste. It's essentially growing just so that it can die. This may be honestly the most serious conversation I have ever seen Romani give in his entire span of this game. It's meaningless. Truly meaningless. The more time passes, the more life leaves this world unfulfilled. I can't help but think that when it comes to life forms on this world, the planet simply has the wrong settings. Don't you think so, Mash? You're a half man made. Or you are half man made. You are an incomplete being, a product made by imperfer imperfect humans who tried to play God. You have the right to hate them and the duty to reject them. Human history has no value. All this is no more than the remnants left behind by humans leading meaningless lives. Okay. Is this literally their way of trying to possibly foreshadow that Romani has something to do with Solomon? Because let me tell you, this is starting to sound a whole lot like I burned, I burned human history talk right now coming out of Romani. By the way, I'm not actually, I don't actually want an answer to that question. Please don't answer me in the comments about it. I'm just making conversation about it. Okay. Not every question I ask is meant to be answered. It just so happens to look like a picture that has meaning. What was, what was strange was how gentle his words were. Everything he said was impossible for me to accept. I couldn't agree at all. But his voice was so gentle. His words were filled with wisdom and compassion. Talking about the same character, right? If it's causing you pain, you can stop, he whispered into my ear with a voice both sweet and dangerous. Um. Romani, are you coming on to me? It's okay. Just let it happen. I'm about to mash me some potatoes. <laughs> but. You're not Dr. Roman, are you? Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Dr. Roman can be pessimistic, antisocial, and he often says the wrong thing and gives up. But he would never deny any kind of human effort. You only look like him. You're something else entirely. Oh my god! A.M. This is God. I can't. I had the weird Romani as a clown dream again. <laughs> 6 A.M. This is when I always wake up. What a strange dream. It felt like I was being dragged down, as if I took one wrong step, I would never wake from the dream. Senpai went through the same thing before, but why would it happen to me now? The call from the command, command room made me feel tense. Perhaps the strange dream had affected me. I had a feeling that this was a premonition, one that was telling me that my ray shift into the seventh singularity will be my last. Okay, I hate the fact now that she's monologuing but not talking. Because it literally gives no... It gives no, like, inclination, because this is just how they talk in this text bubble. But there's no separating it from the idea that this is her inner monologue and not her speaking out loud. Kind of slightly annoys me. Only slightly. Nitpick a little bit. You got here five minutes after the summons. Looks like you're ready to go, Vane. Given how abrupt the summons was and how early in the morning it is, I suppose there's no need for explanation. Yep, it's time for a showdown. 
Yes, that's right. The day's finally here. According to Chaotus Clocks, there's not much of 2018 left. The lost year of 2019 is almost upon us. Before that happens, we need to find out what caused the incineration of humanity. That is the purpose of our grand order. Roll credits. <laughs> and our long journey is almost at an end. Master Vane Zanagi, we owe it all to you and MASH. I'm sorry, I'm two minutes late. Master Curialite has arrived. Woo! Ah! Salt. Oh, hello. Good morning, senpai. Sorry for being so flustered. I need to stay calm at all times, don't I? Yes, good to see you're getting along. A tough spirit is uh, one thing, but teamwork is important too. All right, Vane, Mash, let's try this again. At seven o'clock this morning, Kiata completed its preparations for the seventh singularity race shift. We have little time left. Our backs are against the wall here. The last singularity. This is the grail that Solomon sent into the past himself, and I'd like you to recover it. I know I sound like a broken record, but are you ready? It's going to be another tough journey, dear. Blah blah blah. blah. Tough journey. <laughs> Leave it to us. Foo foo! Yeah, that's the kind of person you are, Vane. I was silly to even ask. Then let's start the briefing. This time we will race shift to the beginning of human history. The beginning of all civilization. The world when it was unified as one. The mother that flourished along the Tigris and Euphrates and influenced a great many civilizations. One of the world's oldest civilizations, which began almost simultaneously with the earliest Egyptian kingdoms. In the world of Magecraft, this era was the twilight of the Age of Gods and a topic of research. The land of ancient Mesopotamia, 2600 BC, the beginning of Sumerian civilization after the Ubaid culture. <sighs> the world of the BC era, where reality was a place of mystery and gods walked the land. Indeed, Mesopotamia and the age of the first Sumerian kings. Just the process of getting there makes this tougher than any previous singularity. It's the last the age of fantasy on Earth when gods and monsters were a part of everyday life. Sup, Da Vinci. What kind of response is that? How boring. All my effort waiting to burst out like at the right moment has gone up in smoke. I wouldn't say that. You surprised me. To think one person has the power to silence the entire room in an instant. The way you put so much effort into such trivial matters, I wish Senpai could be like that sometimes. <laughs> Wait. You wish I could put a lot of infert, uh, effort, infert? God, I can't talk today. Effort into trivial matters? Um, Mash, I question your priorities, but okay. Foo foo! Leonardo, quit messing around. Do you have what I asked you for? Yes, it's done. Of course it would be. Vaini Zanagi, here's a present for you. Is this a scarf? It seems to be made from very fine and sturdy fibers. Remember the mask I made to protect you in the desert? Say hello to Mark II. The mana density in the atmosphere is much greater than what you'd experienced in ancient Egypt. There's a limit to what you can take with you on a ray shift. This is the bare minimum, but I promise you it's effective. Thank you. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, by the way, I'll be in the command room this time as well. Don't worry about proving your existence in that era. All right, I suppose I shall give you a small lecture on the place you're about to visit. Please don't. The word Mesopotamian is Greek in origin. Meso means middle and Potamia means river. It refers to the civilization that flourished between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers that flowed into the Persian Gulf. The order name is Babylonia, but it wasn't called that until a little later. Ancient Mesopotamia, Sumer. What's classified as ancient civilization does seem to span over a long period of time. <clears throat> For instance, between 5000 BC and I can't read what? 2000 BC, many different civilizations flourished and they all played important roles in human history. Indeed, this time we're sending you to one of those civilizations in 2600 BC, the age of the first kings. From the point of view of major craft, it's the era when humans parted ways with the gods. That's right. I don't know the reason the king of this era made that decision. 
But it was at this point that the Age of Gods came to an end, and by the advent of Anno Domini era, all divine spirits had disappeared from the Earth. Some may have lasted into the AD era in some island countries, but by 1000 AD they were, they were gone. Except for extreme cases like deities that remained completely isolated from humans. Well, let's put that topic off aside. What I really wanted to talk about, talk to you about was the difficulty of this race shift. Race shifting into the BC era is extremely difficult. The further back into human history you go, the more unstable the race shift. So as you get closer to the age of gods, things get more uncertain. Some academics call the age of gods an age of uncertainty. It's not something that lends itself to observation. On top of that, Sheba is refusing to stabilize. Actually, I doubt it ever will. Fufu! Yeah, but with the help of the staff at Kiauda, we were able to calculate the location of the seventh singularity and observe it. Given the difficulty, I'll be staying here in the command room, which also means I won't be able to act as navigator, but still. On my honor as a genius, I hereby swear that I will flawlessly prove your existence. So, don't worry about a thing. Get out there and go have a grand adventure. Leonardo's statements are inappropriate, but this really is an experience not many can have. You're going to the ancient world, a place that modern man will never know about. The danger is immeasurable, but I hope that's also how amazing your discoveries will be. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, once we put an end to everything, tell me what you've learned on this journey. Hey there, don't get so sentimental. Vanis and Agi is about to go to battle. You need to keep them sharp. Sheesh, Romani, go get some sleep. Trying to act tough just proves you're tired. I beg your pardon. I got plenty of rest. I'm all fired up and ready to go. Come, your coffins are ready. Out of context, that's creepy. From here on, this will be your battle, Vane. The Sixth Singularity was full of special conditions we never came across before. This one's going to be every bit as tough. It's a unique era after all. Stay calm and be ready to deal with anything. A tense heart will shatter from a blow. Being flexible and adaptable will get you further. Gotcha. What's wrong, Mash? I figured you all be you'd be all set to go. Yes, I'm ready to do whatever I must to support Master's investigation and operations in the Seventh Singularity. But I'm sorry, Doctor, can I ask you something? What is it? I hope it's something I can answer. This is kind of a philosophical question, but do humans... Rather, does life have any meaning at all? I mean objectively, not subjectively. I never thought about it, but it's really bothering me. That's a tough question. Objective meaning, huh? I mean, if you look at things from a God's perspective, life might all seem equally meaningless. Well, really, life has neither meaning nor merit right up to the end. The end? Yeah. If you're asking about the meaning of it all, well, there isn't any. Nothing has meaning on its own. Meaning is something that gets determined later. Humans are born, grow up, and die all without meaning. It's only when a life's over that you finally see what it meant. That's what life is, Mash. We don't live in order to create meaning. We live so meaning can be found from our life. That's actually very profound. Yes, that's how I'd like to live my life too. Thank you, Dr. Roman. I'm grateful for all the kindness you've shown me. All right, you're both in your coffins, yeah? We're gonna bury you 10 feet underground. What? What? Vane, your mission this time is to recover the Grail. Shocker. Isn't that what it always is? It's important to find and remove the cause of the Singularity, but your biggest goal is to recover the Grail. We don't know its exact coordinates, but it should be somewhere in Mesopotamia, your race shift destination. I pray that this is our last search for the Holy Grail. Alright, I'm starting the race shift program. Everyone here on Kiata's staff will do their very best to send Master Vane to the BC era. On summon program start, Par Paratron conversion start. Race shift starting in 3, 2, 1. All right, procedures cleared. Seventh Grand Order commencing operation. Seventh 
So, Showtime. Seventh Singularity. Humanity Foundation value A. Absolute Demonic Fort Babylonia. Chain of the Heavens.